Welcome back guys for part two of our Liberty Walk body kit install on the K-Swap 308. And for those of you that are here to watch a 308 Ferrari get cut up, this is the episode for you because this is the one where I have cut all four fender arches off of the car. And let me tell you, it's crazy to be standing here holding this. You can't just take this off the car. You have to cut it off. And as you guys know, this thing started out as a really nice example, which makes it that much more intense to do. But we did it, it's done, and I'll show you guys the entire process. We will rewind a bit because in the last episode from the end of last week, I showed you guys my process for installing one flare. We installed the driver's side rear, and I showed you guys what I think is the best way to do that from drilling all the holes, getting the rib nuts installed, and all that kind of stuff. So we installed the other three flares, got them on the car, and once I show you guys that process, the angle grinder is coming out. Now, as I get started, I'll remind you guys, if you want to support this channel and like these videos, remember to subscribe and leave me some feedback because that kind of stuff does me a lot as a content creator and helps this channel grow. As for the fender install, it's the same as our last episode. Because these fenders don't come drilled, we have to do that first for a grand total of 21 eighth inch holes. This time around, I did change up my install method a little bit. Instead of drilling the car after marking holes through the fenders, I decided to drill the car with the fender in place, which was mostly experimental. I wanted to see how it would change the end result and if I preferred this method or the previous one. But it turns out both methods are pretty much the same, so I stuck with this one because it was a bit of a time saver. This time around, instead of using the DA to feather the edges of my holes, I used a Scotch-Brite pad on the end of my die grinder, and I'm really happy with how this tool actually worked out. It was much more controllable, easier to use, and a whole lot faster than trying to work with the DA on the curved surface of the fender arch. After that was more touching up of the paint and making sure that we're not going to have any rust underneath these rib nuts once we install them. fender of course installed perfectly and it was onto the fronts which I moved back and forth doing both of them simultaneously between drilling holes, doing the touch up paint, scuffing, etc. The entire process to get all three fenders done for this round was about two hours. It was very quick largely due to the fact that this kit really does fit as well as it does. It's fantastic. So the body kit's fully installed, it mounts up, it's how it should be, the fitment is great, but that means we now need to remove the original arches from the car. And if you don't know why you need to do that, that's the main point of a wide body or over fender, fender flare kit, is to give you more room. And if you don't get rid of the factory arch underneath, you're not doing yourself any favors. We gotta remove sheet metal so we can fit a bigger tire under the car. And the only way to do that is to hack it up. Now there is still a little bit left to do before we actually cut the arches off of the car. I need to remove all four fiberglass fenders so we have access to the sheet metal underneath. And then I need to draw up a cut line on the metal itself so that I know exactly what metal we want to remove. I laid down some more tape, this time accidentally purchasing a different 3M yellow tape, which turned out to be a kind of interesting stretchy vinyl that I hadn't used before. But honestly, it worked really well. So if you're looking for a new type of tape, I found this stuff at Home Depot. It was really easy to draw on, stuck to the car perfectly, and was flexible and stretchy enough to follow the contours, which was nice. With all four fenders taped up, it was time to actually draw the lines out for the new cut on the arches. And I'll be honest, this line isn't based on much of anything other than removing as much material as possible while still making sure the rib nuts have the material needed. And we are almost to the fun part. I channeled my inner Nakai-san and got out the air saw, suspecting this would be the best way to do the job, but my pneumatic saw sucks. Every one that I've had sucks. They always jam up and don't work too well. So this idea was short-lived. After giving it a few moments, I moved on to Old Faithful, my DeWalt four and a half inch angle grinder that I love. This thing is maneuverable in the hand, and I like to think that I'm a pretty good surgeon with this thing. So with that said, here goes nothing. I 
I started the fender cutoff process on the driver's side front fender, and with the angle grinder, this thing cut like butter. The thin Ferrari sheet metal came right apart. One real plus side to this project on the Ferrari itself is the fact that this is a tube chassis car with a skin on it. It's not a unibody vehicle, which means I've only got a single layer of sheet metal to cut through on all four corners. There's no inside layer and outside layer to reconnect, and there's no interior to close off from. So as far as fender cutting jobs go, this is about as easy as it gets. It was exciting to catch a lot of these shots in slow motion because it's definitely a one-shot opportunity, and I don't expect myself to be cutting the fenders off of a Ferrari again anytime soon. All right, that's the fourth arch cut off of the car. Little bit of a recap. It was awesome. Exciting, little bit terrifying, nerve wracking. I mean, yeah, I'm pumped to do this and I know that it's for the best, but there's still a little bit of a mental challenge in plunging an angle grinder to the side of an expensive, rare Italian exotic car. No two ways around it, but I'm stoked on it. That's a new type of high. I've cut up a lot of cars before, but this one is a new one. I'll be chasing this one for a minute. With the arches cut off though, there's definitely some cleanup to do. I'm not gonna go crazy on the cleanup yet and the edge finishing because I don't even know if whatever tires I'm gonna get are gonna fit yet. I might need to do some trimming and I just don't wanna spend a bunch of time on finish work. But we'll clean up the edges, make sure that we're not gonna cut ourselves, make sure that no paint's gonna come flaking and flying off and then get the kit put back on because that's the whole point here, right? Before putting the Liberty Walk kit back on the car, I wanted to show you what this thing looks like with the arches cut off because it's pretty wild to see the fenders radius like this. It's not something you get to see every day, but this is what cars look like underneath big fenders. As mentioned, this is all so that we can clear some massive tires and it's gonna help with ride height. This will allow us to run the car a little bit lower. Of course, we will have to account for suspension geometry when we do that though. I can't imagine anybody's gonna need four arches for a 308, but you never know. I'm not gonna be quick to toss these things in the dumpster. As mentioned, I did wanna do some cleanup to the arches, although I'm not too worried about getting all of them perfect. They don't need to be. This stuff's covered up, you can't see it. And I imagine I'm gonna have to come back and do a little bit of trimming anyway once we have tires and everything on the car and we can check that everything's gonna clear the way we need it to. With everything cleaned up though, it was time to put the kit on again for the final time, at least final time for the installation process. And as one might expect, everything went perfectly smooth. I know you guys have seen the car with the kit taped to it, but I couldn't help but step back and take one look with the kit fully installed. It's a cool feeling knowing that it's not just hanging on thanks to some 3M painter's tape. It's really on there. This is legit, it's real, it happened, and I'm stoked. So the whole kit is installed, everything's back on, it's just as it should be. There's probably a little bit of modification to be done in terms of making the kit fit absolutely perfect once we actually get the body work and painting this thing but I'm really happy with it. This thing looks awesome and it feels pretty good knowing that the kit is fully installed. That stage of the bodywork is done, save for the little three-piece rear spoiler. Now on the paint front, I asked you guys what you thought between body matched yellow fenders and satin black kind of trim, more classic styled. And it's pretty surprising to me at least, it's about a 90-10 split between body matched and black. That, that difference surprised me. I've made my decision, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave you guys hanging on it because that's part of the fun and it's not a big consequential change. So you just have to hang on it to see what I'm gonna do. But I know what I've chosen is gonna look awesome for anyone that is in doubt, I promise you that. Now there is some other stuff to talk about now that we have the kit on the car. And that next step is wheels, tires, and suspension. 
I've mentioned that H&R is gonna be building custom coilovers for the car, and that I want to run an 18 by 11 inch square setup wrapped in 305 nittos. One thing that we're gonna to need to do is to custom build all of those components to fit the car and to give us proper geometry. Now it's probably pretty hard to visualize if you don't really know what you're looking at here, but I'll do my best to talk my way through it. The biggest problem with the car at the moment with respect to the control arms is the fact that the 308 uses very low offset wheels from the factory. And with this Liberty Walk kit on it, it calls for a 10 and a half inch wide negative 81 offset wheel. And while that looks really cool, it's terrible for wheel bearings and even worse for the front scrub radius. It's stuff that I don't wanna deal with. So the ultimate goal at the moment is to build all new control arms so that we can extend the track width of the car, which will yield better handling, higher offset wheels, and ideally we can also modify some stuff to get better brake choices and a better hub pattern. Now there's a lot of other things to take into account when we're talking about custom suspension design, and we're gonna go over all of that stuff in some future episodes, so don't worry, but it's many, many episodes worth, so I can't cram it all into this now, and I don't think you wanna hear me talk about it over suspension B-roll. The point at hand is, now that we've got the kit installed, we can start measuring up for custom suspension components and get wheels and tires ordered up. We've been waiting for these parts all along. All right guys, this episode is a wrap. We have finished up the kit install and we've talked enough about it. I think you guys are probably content. I know I am, and I'm already pumped for Thursday's episode, so I will catch you guys then. But in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Leave me a comment, give me some feedback. I appreciate all of it. I'll catch you guys on Thursday. <laughs>